next one can actually spell what I'm saying and text now. Okay, that's on mute. Everything's on mute. scene of we live for real what's going on four viewers I did not expect that hey Vigo how's it going on And I thought I was just by myself. Here we go. Well, sometimes YouTube does that to you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our live stream. I just wanted to do a little update for you guys. Uh, maybe you should cut off the beginning of that video. It's going to be a little funny. Um, yeah, I haven't done a live in a little while. Still don't have that calendar, but haven't forgot about you guys. been filming a few extra videos. They're going to be up on the channel soon. And yeah, you know, today I'm just going to look uh, a little bit uh, with you. I'm going to show you this piece by Robert Schumann, Papillon. Maybe we just look a little bit at this, you know, nothing fancy. Honestly, I just wanted to tune in and, and say hi. So, you know, that's, uh, that's how it is. So this is uh, Papillon Opus 2. I'm just reading about this, this thing. Uh, Schumann wrote this when he's a law student. And... Um, he mentions something that uh, we should read to understand this piece better. It's Jean Paul's Flegeljahr. Flegeljahr. Flegel meaning fly, I believe. Jahr meaning year. It's German. And uh, some reference about butterflies, um, a, a masked ball turning into notes. So something about a masked ball and butterflies. And this. Schumann Papillon is all in 3-4. There's 12 pieces with a little introduction. 12 short pieces uh, f played one after the next, all in 3-4. Schumann, yeah, apparently was a law student. That's a very interesting thing. So here we go. Uh, here's the introduction. That's the introduction. Then we have the first sort of waltz here uh, with two repeats. And the second part. Number two. Number three is a little, uh, a little more pomp and circumstance. This one. Yeah, 
I'm just not going to play the repeats. I don't expect to play this whole thing, but I'll try as far as my... Uh, it's not really sight reading because I've been teaching it, but I never really learned it. Okay, number four. This one's presto, you know. And it's, I, I like this one. <laughs> into B flat is so cool so that's uh, that's up to number five there yeah I think I'll just stop there you know but uh, let me just play you one of my favorite ones also number nine is so cool you know and it's really one piece after the next they're short as you can see <laughs> He didn't do so many new things, you know, compared to Chopin and Liszt. They really, really stretch the harmonic language like crazy. Schumann, not as much, not as much. Kind of like Brahms as well. Brahms didn't do that. Uh, but uh, they did such beautiful things, wrote such beautiful music. And the Papillon Schumann Opus 2, this is Schumann Opus 2 Papillon, is among my personal favorites of Schumann. I mean, there, there's a... A lot of wonderful music by him. This one, I, I would say the second piano sonata, the first piano sonata in F-sharp minor as well, and above all, the A minor piano concerto is like one of my favorite pieces of all time. So there we go, guys. I just wanted to say hi and stay tuned. We'll have some more live videos coming up. I am going to put that calendar up. Last two, two, uh, two weeks were crazy busy. Lots of recording. Uh, with one of my groups here in Montreal. We have a, an, an EP coming out uh, very soon and, and some other stuff as well with some really, really cool surprises. So I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, we play f uh, music, uh, La Grande Chanson Française. We make our own arrangements of pieces by uh, Aznavour, Edith Piaf, and uh, Jacques Brel and stuff like that. So really old French music from you know the 60s, 70s and that kind of stuff. Hi, Gucci Tales. Gucci Tales. How did you develop love for the piano? Well, you know, I always loved music. You know, uh, my, it was my grandmother wanted me to have music lessons. And um, I, I, I liked it naturally. I, I was, you know, I was drawn to music. My father, I have to say, my father loved classical music. So I grew up listening to classical music and 
and and I loved it. I loved it more than anything, and I think that's that's a big key in how you know I was just in an, an environment where I could kind of that love that I naturally had for it could flourish. So you know this when I uh, when I went to I went to um, the Conservatory of Music of Montreal. I started going there when I was 14 and, you know, started to be around other people who, you know, had a similar interest in music than I did, uh, as opposed to being kind of the, the weirdo who liked classical music as, as, a, um, as a young boy. And, uh, but it was really when, you know, I went to a uh, academy, it's called Orford Music near Montreal, and um, it was the first time I was in a place, it's kind of like band camp, you know? So it was the first time I was in a place just completely surrounded by other musicians doing nothing but music and everyone loves it and so many amazing teachers. And uh, I remember crying when leaving because I loved it. So it was like paradise for me at the time, you know? Uh, I still like it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that was that was a place where I, I learned about other music that I didn't know. You know, I had never heard Brahms. I had never really heard Prokofiev so much. I thought I didn't like Prokofiev and someone was teaching Prokofiev. So I heard the same piece. It was the third sonata over and over and over again. And something that sounded kind of noisy to me or even atonal started to sound beautiful and really tonal after I'd heard it three or four times. And that really helped in, in like cultivating the love for the music, but I think it was already there. <clears throat> and uh, the other thing probably also was, you know, just putting, uh, really putting the time and effort into it for me. You know, when I started to practice in university, like four or five hours a day, just because I wanted to, and, and I, well, I made myself also, I was preparing for auditions. Uh, I learned that I really love it. The more you do it, the more you love it. So that really helps. And the more you immerse yourself into it, the more you love it. <clears throat> that and listening to music, just listen to music. The more you listen to beautiful music, Beethoven's fourth piano concerto, that was like the most beautiful thing I had ever heard. I remember listening to it on the radio and I, I put a little cassette uh, back then because we had cassettes and, and recording it from the radio and I would listen to it over and I was like singing it in my room, you know, and, and full blast. And then my <clears throat> one of my parents came in the room and I remember being a little shy, you know, that I was singing and so it was kind of shy for me, you know, but uh, I really loved that. Hi, Dauphin, into Dauphin. Hi, how are you? Great piece you just played. What is it? Something with Schumann. Yeah, it's Schumann Papillon, Papillon, Opus 2. It's one of a very early composition by Schumann. This is, uh, this is the work of a law student. <laughs> so, but... Honestly, I think it's one of the most beautiful things he wrote, really. And uh, it goes through so many keys. Uh, why don't we just finish up with this, you know? We had that, <clears throat> uh, here are the ones we looked at. It started out in D major with this intro. And the number one. And then all of a sudden we go in E flat major. We go right into B flat major. I love that one, especially. When... And then after that, another key again. So we have that uh, F major, right? And we go in. So beautiful. And then an F minor. Number seven. And A flat major. So beautiful. 
beautiful. And then uh, another one in minor E. Uh, a minor introduction which goes to uh, D flat major. And then that number nine which we play, B flat minor. C major, number 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a kind of uh, waltz there. It sounds like uh, Sleeping Beauty. And that's, that's so beautiful. And then a number 11, which is much lo longer, and we come back to D major in this number 11. And there's a beautiful part in it. <clears throat> Gotta love these, uh, some additions. They make these things so that some parts of it open up so you don't have to turn an extra page. Boy, that's nice. So uh, listen to this uh, part here, how beautiful it is. a little gently if I play it gently. And it comes back to that um, D major with a finale which finishes in D major. Like Schumann writes these beautiful finales in these uh, pieces that have several numbers, like the etudes, sym uh, symphonic etudes. Kuv, hi Kuv. 
Have you ever suffered an injury? <clears throat> not that I know of. <laughs> Maybe I have and don't know it. But I hope not. Uh, I've never suffered an injury that, uh, that I wasn't able to play other than cutting my finger. So, yeah, it's important to be really, really careful with those muscles. The intro really reminds me of Chopin Ballad Number no. 1. Yeah, good, good one. Yeah, it is. It has those octaves in the two hands. This one in... Um... Right in the... It's uh, similar. Similar kind of thing. Thanks, really cool pieces. By the way, I meant to say injury. I got that. Okay, guys, so this ends our little quick impromptu live session. I just wanted to pop in and say hi and didn't forget about you guys. Calendar is coming up. Going to have that on stephenmassacott.ca. Thank you to everyone who has become a patron. That's really awesome. Uh, since we revamped the patron page, we've got a bunch of patrons. That's really cool. Uh, so check out the patron page if you want to support the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace over and out. And... That's it. We'll see you in the next.